I want to tell you something about the voting. We heard last week, if you weren't here, you should listen to the message from last week. The scriptural principle for us as Christians to be involved in politics. Okay? We have to be. If we're not, our form of government will go away, and then you will not have a choice. And I'm going to say one more thing, and I've, maybe not out here, but in California, I knew Christians come to the church, and they'd vote for a party that believed in abortion. I, I can't see how you can reconcile that with your Christianity. No. It, it just doesn't reconcile. Because it's not just about politics, it's about your belief. What you believe is right. Okay? So let's stand together. You got your little well bubbling this morning? That, that Holy Spirit in you? With anticipation? Oh, are you excited about what Jesus can do today? Are you excited to worship Him today? Oh, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Father. We lift our hands in surrender to you, Lord. And we ask that your presence would come and abide in the praises of your people. Have your way in this service. Have your way in our hearts. And we just want to glorify you. We set aside our cares. We focus on you. In Jesus' name, amen. received answered prayer raise your hand maybe a dumb question but how many of you need some prayers answered right now I got my hand up you know the word is like a medicine the word is like a medicine it's health to those who find it and healing to all of their flesh. This has been bubbling in me for a year. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith cometh by hearing and produces an unseen substance into the seen realm. By faith, God spoke the unseen realm into the seen realm. Everything you see here was already in the unseen realm. Do you need a body part? It's already there. Jesus said, ask me anything and I'll, if I don't have it, I'll make it. That's what the Greek says. If I don't have it, I'll create it. I will create it. I sit here every Sunday with my heart broken because my friend sits here. We must speak faith. I'm saying this now begging. Can we preach on faith? Can we preach on healing? Some. Can we hear faith? I, I was born a cripple. I couldn't walk till I was two and a half. And one day at church, my mom sensed the anointing for healing. And they anointed my hips, my knees, my ankles, and my feet. I never crawled. I never walked along the edge of furniture. I just got up and started to run two weeks later. I don't remember it. But it was the anointing. And you are the body of his anointing. Jesus Christ, Christ is the anointed one in his anointing. You are his hands. You are his feet. How's he going to heal? He's going to heal through your mouth, through your hands, through your feet. Our hands, our feet. My wife yesterday was telling me a story of her son. Hurt his arm when her older daughter who was there was playing with him. And he just said, Daddy, when his daddy was praying for the food, would you pray for my arm too? Daddy just said a little prayer of the faith of a child. 
Let's have our children pray for us. Son. The faith of a child. He was healed. I, I'm going to stop, but every Sunday I come and I'm bursting. Please, let's start praying for one another every Sunday. Let's start preaching on healing, on faith. Let's receive. morning we're gonna I, I'm being honest I've been all over the charts <laughs> emotionally spiritually trying to figure out what God wants to do and I think I have a handle on it <clears throat> but you know you never know for sure because God can change direction do things I'm continuing this series this morning on foundation stones and remember last time we talked we talked about faith the just shall live by faith. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> we also learned that repentance and faith is a two-sided coin. You can't have faith without repentance. Amen? Because repentance is acknowledging God's way, repenting of your sin, and turning towards Him. If you're going the wrong direction, turn towards Him. You have faith in what He has done for us. And how many know he's done a lot for us? How many know he's done more than anybody else for us? <laughs> There's nobody that compares to him. In no way. He's uno number one. Way up here. Everybody else is way down here. He has so many promises for us. And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, and I, you know, sometimes you can't even, you know, control your own thoughts, kind of get thoughts, come things going, all kinds of stuff in your head. I go, our God knows every thought of every person in this world. That just blows my mind. That he has the capacity to know every thought you have, every emotion, every feeling. In your heart. He knows you. He knows me. And he cares about us. Because he said in John chapter 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his son. And if you read on, it says, He didn't send his son into the world, condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Oh, we have a God that does not condemn us. He loves us. He knows everything about us. And faith is key for us because it's a hinge pin in our walk with God. Because remember, faith is what transforms us. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Having faith in Jesus Christ brings about change in our life. Not 20 years ago, not 10 years ago, not 5 years ago, not a year ago. Today! Today, by faith, you can have a great change if you're believing in Jesus Christ. He can change the circumstance in your life. He can change your heart, how you feel. He can heal your body. He can deliver you from all your afflictions. But we've got to believe. Last week, I talked about the just shall live by faith. Today, I want to talk to you about keeping the faith. 
keeping the faith. Our walk or our race, let's put it that way, not a 5K, not a 10K. It's a marathon our whole life. is a walk of faith. From the beginning when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to the day we go home, it's a walk of faith. And we must keep that faith. Again, it's not how fast you run the race. It's if you finish the race. In a marathon, now I've never run, my wife runs a marathon. She's the gal if you want to talk about marathon. But there's times that you've got to walk. There's sometimes people get blisters on their feet and it's hard to finish. There's all kinds of obstacles in our life. But you've got to push through by faith. Now, again, the just shall live by faith. We learn that we are to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith. And that what's the, the mark for examining ourselves? Is Christ in you? Is Christ working in you? That's how you know if you're in the faith. What has Jesus done for you? I remember before we were saved, I had an aunt. She was my godmother, Rosemary. She used to pray for me, oh boy. She said, I'm praying for you. live by faith. And before I was saved, we go we got together every Sunday. We go buy donuts after went to Lutheran church by the way, you know, every Sunday faithful. Buy some donuts, go over her house, and she'd hand out tracks to us, giving talking about Jesus. We'd go home and say, Oh hand Rosie, it's Jesus this, it's Jesus that it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mocking her. She was so in love with Jesus. Even to the day that she died. She was a prayer warrior. She was in love with him. Jesus was her, her everything. Great example of living by faith, doing the marathon, and finishing the race. Because you want to finish the race. You want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. To be faithful, you got to have faith. That's the whole goal. Oh, and by the way, our marathon is not really that long. Like James says, life for us is but a vapor. It's here and it's gone. Compared to eternity. Amen? So let's not be porosito. That's Spanish. Porosito means feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, it's so hard. It's so long. It's so difficult. No. Yes, it's difficult. But don't swallow in pity. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. Because pity will get you nowhere. We are a new creation. We went through Luke 18. That was in the persistent widow with the, the judge. We learned about the tax collector, the guy who went, you know, humbly before God. Instead of the religious person thinking, yeah, look at him. That guy had faith. One who humbled himself. We learned that we're to come to Christ like a child. Now, you know, the interesting thing about a child, they believe you when you tell them something. They don't have all this knowledge we have to compute the law. I'm not sure about this. Now, we need to have biblical knowledge. We need to sift, make sure it's scriptural. Okay? But sometimes we carry that way over the edge. One time, newly saved, of high school, my wrestling coach, he had a, a, a restaurant. He had two little girls. And we were in the back and we are talking. He had a back room, and his girls were coloring and stuff. And he left. He had to go do something up front. 
And of course, I'm all excited about Jesus. So I tell the girls about the Lord. You know what they do? They run up front. Their dad. Dad, Joseph, Jesus is real. He's coming back for us one day. I mean, they just let it out there. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> but they believed what I said in childlike faith. That's what we need to do. We need to have that childlike faith and to believe. Again, laying this foundation stone of faith towards God means accepting the righteousness of Christ in God that we have. Because remember, Abraham believed and it was counted unto him as righteousness. Not your righteousness, but Christ's righteousness in our life. Which means that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our filthy rags. He doesn't see how ugly we are, so to speak, in the flesh. He sees the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. And that gives us the ability to live right. Amen? To do the right thing, the right way, and trust in Him. But we need to keep the faith and run this race and finish it. Now all of you that have been around for a while, you've seen the ones that have not continued. They get derailed. Things happen. The enemy wants to destroy their faith. He wants to destroy your faith in any way he can. He'll use circumstances. He'll use people. He'll use sickness. Whatever it might be. Financial hardship to destroy your faith. And sometimes, let's be real, this marathon race of faith, it can suck. Can we be real this morning? Being a Christian isn't always a bed of roses. Sometimes it's very difficult. But in that difficulty, there's always hope. And there's faith that you'll come through on the other side better. Now, when we moved out here, 2004. Pastoring a church, you know, it was good. The people were good. Loved people. It was, it was good. But God gave me a dream. And it was a God dream. And part of that dream is I was moving. I just felt that I, you know, needed to resign. And didn't do it right away. It took some time. I told them Gave him a year to find another pastor. And then we moved. Was it easy? No. Most difficult time of my life. I think. No. I'm going to borrow this right here. I can have it. By faith, I take it. And I'm going to share a little bit here with you. Just so you know, and you can look around your brothers and sisters, they don't have it rosy either. Every one of us has gone through something and may be going through it right now. Difficult. Man, I got God's plan. God's called me. Come out here and help start a church. How exciting. Try to get a job. 18 years of pastoring, you know, being used past and past, on your resume doesn't appeal to a lot of employers. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, in the workforce, I had one, one guy tell me one time, and he said, uh, he said, you know, we get dirty at this job. And that gets real inside of me. And I just told him, I said, hey, you know what? I was born and raised a farmer. I know what it means to be dirty. But, you know, they passed over, passed over, passed over. Financially, I was being unbearable. For a man, for me, I felt so low in the gutter. 
solo. I remember walking to Walmart, thinking, how am I going to pay for food for my kids? Tried different things. Did get a job, practically satellite installation, subcontractor. You want to talk about a job? <clears throat> I, I don't, I'm not in my twenties, okay? All right. Used to have to drive all the way down to St. Paul in the morning to the shop to pick up equipment. Sometimes it sent us all the way out to St. Cloud or sometimes it's Wisconsin, you know, Minnesota, all over. And it doesn't matter if it's raining. It doesn't matter if sunshine. It doesn't matter if it's 45 below. The people scheduled to have their satellite installation, and here we go. I remember one time, New Year's Eve, 11 o'clock at night, on a roof, installing a satellite. I had to finish the route. I had to do it. Oh, and you learned something else too. People who aren't spiritual, they love to schedule their stuff on Christmas, New Year, you know, holidays. They, they, they want, because they got the day off. They don't have to take the day off to get there. And they don't care about the holiday. Go through it. Very difficult time. And I... I told this before, and I'll say it again. I'm going to shorten it up a little bit here. But I remember one time I was, I tried financial services too. Got involved in that. Got my Series 6 and 63 license. You know. But it's kind of hard when you don't know a lot of people. You know. I mean, even one time God gave me, oh man, He gave me an acrostic. I remember in our prayer room praying, and he just gave it, it's called Thrive. Transform household resources into valuable, valuable equity. Teaching people how to handle their finances. And here I am, die. But I kept believing. Kept believing. And your faith is tried. And you know what you need? What I got. A rhema word from God. I was driving from Cambridge to North Branch. I had a little deal prism. Crazy little car. Did all kinds. Of, I did satellite installation with that car too. Wrap a ladder on top. Go down. You got to do what you got to do. One time, a side story. One time. <laughs> I think Joe was talking about it the other day. Talking about this little car. And my brother, we, we, he, in amongst all this, he needs help. So we move him out to our house. He's living with us. Now, I'm a pretty good sized guy. But my brother, Bruce, he made me look small. Big guy. One time we got in that little car coming from church, you know. <laughs> Two big guys in this little car. We were riding so there was snow. We're just pushing right through it, man. But you have these things that happen. So by faith, we reached out to help him too. But I was driving to North Branch, and I was just, I was, I was so beat up. Felt like lower than dung. You know? Emotionally. And the enemy was there. Hallelujah. Made the biggest mistake. You came to family. What kind of man are you? Those kind of words just da 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 da. And I was just crying, God. Feeling it and just weeping. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, Those are not my. Talk about a revelation. Talk about faith welling up. 
You know, you're holding your shield of faith up and you're getting arrow upon arrow upon arrow upon arrow. Pretty soon that shield gets kind of heavy with all the arrows in it. I remember one time in California, a friend of mine gave me this card for Pastor's Day. And it showed a guy with two shields full of arrows like this. You feel like that sometimes. The fiery darts keep coming. Hitting your shield. Shield's getting heavier and heavier. And you're starting to let it down. And it's hard to deal with it. But you need faith. You got to keep your faith. And life can be very difficult at times. Romans chapter 4. Just write this form, starting with verse 16. You can go through 25. I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to read this here. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that may, that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. See how faith and grace are combined. Now, if you read this <coughs> chapter, Paul, he's making a, a, a huge point about faith and Abraham and all that. And if you read it, you would say, my God, Abraham walked on water. He never had any difficulties in his life if you just read that one part of Scripture. But if you go back and you look at Abraham's life, it's a different story. The father of faith, the one who is the father of us all, he had some very difficult times. 75 years old, he moves out. God says, hey, I'm going to show you a plan. It's going to be yours. He makes the problem. I'm going to make you, uh, you're going to, you know, look at stars. That's how it's going to be your offspring. Wow. That's quite a promise, right? God speaks to him. He's ready to go. He's moving along. You know, he had some battles, victory. He had Sodom and Gomorrah. He, he took over the kings who attacked there. You know, God gave him some victories. Famine hits the land. Abraham goes to Egypt. Now, Abraham says, he looks at his wife, Sarah, and says, she is good looking. Surely when they hear, they find out that she is my wife, they'll kill me and they're going to take her. Faith went on this too. So he lies to the king of Egypt. Wow. Abraham, the father of faith, was a liar? Huh? By the way, past the generation too went to Isaac. He did the same thing with the Philistine king, Abimelech, I think it was. He lied about his wife. But you know, God's grace is there. Because God went to Pharaoh in a dream and said, Do not touch her. Same thing with Isaac. His wife, God appeared and said, you touch her, you're dead. Because God was protecting a bloodline through which Jesus Christ would be born. And the promise he made to Abraham was through Sarah, not through anybody else. So time goes on. Abraham's you know, getting a little bit older. And Sarah's getting a little nervous. I, said, Man, I can't have kids anymore. Things aren't, you know, I've gone through that phase, that change of life. It's not going to happen. So she says to Abraham, Hey, you know the custom is? My, my servant, you can have a child through her. So Sarah says, yeah, go ahead and, and, and lie down with my servant. And well, Abraham, you know, every good guy would say, hey, way to go. We're going to fix this. We're going to make this happen. And so she gets pregnant. But that wasn't God's plan. You with me? It wasn't his plan. And it caused a whole lot of problems, still causing a lot of problems today. Because even though Abraham, the blessing be nation, that blessing spilled over onto his son Ishmael. Because God said, I'll make him a nation too. Not like Isaac, but that's who's at war with Isaac all the time. Child of the flesh or child of faith. Abraham screwed up again, and Sarah did too. Now he's close to 100 years old. 
And God, again, they come to him, they appear, three guys appear, you know, before they're going to Sodom and Gomorrah, and they'll wipe it out. The Lord appears to him, and he invites them for lunch. And they have lunch together. And they say, oh, Abraham, by this time next year, Sarah will have a child. And Abraham bowed down and he laughed within himself. You know, it's when you're told something oh, that seems impossible, you kind of chuckle, don't you? Oh, yeah, really. That was Abraham. And Sarah did the same thing. She laughed in the tent and then the angel said, uh, Why is your wife laughing? And then Sarah said, Oh, I didn't laugh. And the angel said, No, you laughed. <laughs> I'm telling you this because by grace you end up like Abraham. All the bad stuff not remember. All the bad stuff not remember. But you've got to keep believing. And Abraham did. He had his moment. But he kept the faith and he kept believing. Even when he was old and said, my body's dead. He's basically saying, I can't do what I need to do. Right? And Sarah's womb was like, shut up. We've passed uh, that, uh, what do you call it, transition for ladies. Long time ago. But when God makes a promise, you can count on it. Even though the circumstances look around you like, this is dead, this is no good. He made the promise. And He will keep it. That's right. And the importance of faith is this. Getting a word from the Lord in your life. Ever since God gave me that word that's not His words, I don't deal with condemnation anymore. No, I deal with other things. You know what I mean? But that kind of, that, that put a cure to that right then. Because now I recognize the voice of the enemy trying to condemn me, trying to do things in my life that are not right. So by faith, I just put the shield up, flip. That's not God's word. That's the enemy. <laughs> but you know, sometimes we believe the words that are said in other areas. And life is a process. I'm going to close here in a minute. It's a process that God works things out in your marathon of faith. See, when I, before I was saved, I was a scrapper. I mean, let's go to town. I got saved. I had a black eye, nose full of dry blood from being a scrapper on my birthday with like 10 or 15 guys. Me and a buddy, we went to a town that, you know, not our local. Because we knew, you know, you know, you know turtle. Hey, you laugh. Eight back in a, a disco dance place. Can you believe well? I can't dance. No way could I dance. But girls, you're in trouble every time. But I'd always been that way. Because my father is that way. Oh. Kind of run in the family a little bit there. Dad was a Marine, ex Marine. He never went to combat or anything, thank God, because I think he might have been one of those that went unhinged and would have just wiped the enemy out. My mom told me one time, they were in a bar, dancing. And some guy just went like this, tried to pat my mom on the backside. You know, things like that happen in the bar. Five guys, all five, right out the bar. My nephews call him the legend. Yeah, dad had a temper. Thank God he didn't drink. 
But he did chew, and if he ran out of chew, we were in trouble. Because it was very addictive. And he kind of passed that on to me a little bit. Before Christ. Then after Christ, man, I was street witnessing one time. In a little town. And da, 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 da. I was 18, you know. People knew me because I was two-time state champion and all that stuff. Another town, you know, blah, blah. this guy gets all up in my grill. And I'm talking about the love of God. And the Holy Spirit was there. Just let the love flow. There would have been a day, pow! But no. He started swinging and just like this, just crossed the street until finally somebody broke it up. Well, that kind of uh, put a hindrance into all the youth going with me. <laughs> street went. Because it brought it down to real. But things stay in your life and things you've got to deal with. In California, pastoring. Senior pastor. Anybody ever been in a deposition? A lawyer? I was in a deposition for some crazy stuff. And this lawyer starts asking questions. You know, I was nervous, right? Never been in one before. And he starts asking questions. And he, he makes the question so twisted that no matter how you answered, it made you look guilty. Oh, that's when the old Joe started to bubble me. <laughs> if you would have known the things I was thinking and what I wanted to do, thank God the Holy Spirit kept in check. But if you want to look about committing murder in your thoughts, I did it then. And I say that because life's a process. Not everything gets out of you all at once. And you've got to keep the faith. You've got to keep believing. We're going to end with Peter here. Peter. Last Supper. He declares that, you know, I'll die for you, God. I'll die for you. And Jesus said to him, Peter, the enemy would sift your faith. But I have prayed for you that it will. You hear that? You know what Jesus is doing now? He's at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and for me that our faith will not fail. You know what sifting is? It's a terminology. Farmers used to do this back then. The wheat. They would sift the wheat. And they'd throw it in the air and all the little pieces that weren't wheat that wouldn't have would blow away and would hit the ground. It's actually a process which God uses to make us better. And that's what happened to Peter. Man, he denied Christ three times. And the third time, he was very, you know, he used some words that weren't Christian. But yet Jesus told them later on, when they met after his resurrection, he asked them three times, feed my sheep. He says, Peter, you're the rock. I want to build a church on. Not necessarily Peter but on the experience of faith that Peter had. Jesus Christ and his forgiveness in changing Peter's life. There's hope for all of us. Where's our worship team? They're going to come sing a song. I still believe. Bob, you need prayer for your eyes, right? Bob's having issues with his eye. I asked this this morning. Oh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room a little bit. I'm going to say it this way. Support a family. Just sit. You bench 50. Jesus is praying for you. 
Jesus is interceding for you that your faith may not fail. See, the faith walk isn't about getting damaged where you don't believe. Or you're bruised in an area and you just hold back. Because Scripture says we're not to shrink back in our faith in any area. And when Jesus says, I pray that your faith will not fail, that's exactly what will happen. It will not fail. You may not understand everything, but He will give you the rhema word that you need for your life. And I'm not just talking to I'm talking to each one of you this morning. Where are you at in your faith? What's the thing you're struggling with? What's the difficult thing that's hanging on? What's the thing you believe for, like Abraham, that took, what, 30-some years or whatever to get? God could tell us something 10 years ago, and it still hasn't come to that. Are you still believing for that? Oh, I've been praying a long time for this healing. This isn't coming. Keep believing. Have faith. Have faith. Now, when I sing this song, it's for your time to take a step of faith and come forward. And I'm going to ask the elders to come and pray with you. Isaac, you got your anointing on. We're going to anoint Bob. And we're going to believe for healing. Remember, we believe the results aren't ours. Are you with me? We must have faith. The results are up to God. When and how and what He does. Amen? Let's stand together. Begin to make your way to this altar. You're being sifted in an area. For the family, we want to pray with you. I'm calling you out to come up. Because you've been being sifted and you're still being sifted. And there's things going on. Come up to the front here. Others, join us. (coughs) Oh, hallelujah. So none of you are being shifted by faith. I'm being a little sarcastic right now. Bob, come forward. Pray for your healing. You want to believe. You still believe. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes.
the glory.